Hello everyone, in this video we shall be looking at some vintage lenses and see if they are any relevant for use in this day and age. So quick background, what is a vintage lens? Well, lenses that were made way 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 back and they don't otherwise have any practical use today unless we use some sort of adapter to make it work with our modern cameras, which in this case is this shiny ring at the back of this lens here. So the old lenses can be adapted for use with newer body quite cheaply and easily. So initially for fun, I got myself a collection of lenses from eBay. It was fun playing with them, especially brought back some memories of the old Minolta my dad gave me back in 95. All manual and all good. Things were not expected to go beyond fun and play until I came across this little guy. It's an old Soviet era prime lens. Built in 1980, it was never meant to go on a DSLR, let alone shoot videos with. But I did use it for video. And the result was actually quite nice. So I used it again, and then I used it again, and found myself using it over and over. Let me show you an example. I needed this effect, and I knew that this lens would do it. Hence, what you see was made. And this video went online and served its purpose. No one cares that it was shot with a 35 year old lens. Also did a fair few focus pulls with this lens since it has a nice shallow depth of field at f2.0. Most of the videos I make features products and I'm generally filming them up close. Well, however I may be using them, one thing is clear is that I've been using this lens in many, many, many of my videos. While it is possible to replace this lens with a modern equivalent, but the thing is that I don't feel the need to do so. When filming a video, I focus manually anyway, and most of us will continue to do so until we replace our camera body with something that has a follow focus system. We've seen so far that it is functional and workable. Let's look at some pros and cons, starting with cons first. Just as we have good lenses and not so good lenses today, back in the days, there were great lenses and not so great lenses in the mix as well. So some amount of time needs to be invested in research before we make that purchasing decision. You know, it's amazing that some of these lenses are two, three, even four decades old. As hardy as they were built, you still need to be very particular about what condition the lens is in today. Well, thanks to adapters, we can bring these old lenses back to life, but the results are not always perfect. For example, this Canon FD lens, the first adapter that I used with this lens had a little lens of its own which allowed the lens to focus to infinity. But the problem was that the lens was of poor quality and thus reduced the quality of the picture it generated. Next thing I did was got an adapter which did not have any lens. It's just a converter from the old FD system to the new EF. Trouble was that threw off all the mathematical measurements of the lens. It now became something completely different. Fully open, the depth of field was really shallow, but the furthest it would focus is about six inches away from the subject. Sorry about the subject matter as well. Hope you are not being grossed out. Doing everything manually is not everyone's cup of tea. Although the lens itself may have been capable of some automatic adjustments, it'll probably not work with the new camera body. Then again, this is not necessarily a negative for everyone. Oh boy, oh boy, I was waiting for this section. Fun, of course, why not? To discuss the positives, the first thing I'm going to talk about is fun. We are playing around with vintage lenses because in its own ways, it is fun to play with. Needless to say, the lower cost of the vintage lenses is an added bonus. In modern days, we have a variety of lenses in the market, starting from affordable to extremely sophisticated. Whilst in the days of the past, they didn't have as sophisticated electronics on the lens, but they did have lots of different varieties. For example, I found this old Vivitar 70 to 210 mm Pentax K mount lens. It has an interesting feature. The focusing ring is used to zoom in and out if you pull the barrel front and back. And turning the barrel adjusts the focus. So in real life, the application can be like if we have one subject near and the other far, and we are focusing in between them and zooming in and out. That can be done by just one hand. If done right, 
then vintage lenses can stack up almost equally to the modern lenses. Yes, without the electronics and all that, but nonetheless, image quality can still be almost equal to what we have in modern days. What you see here is footage from a video that I made a while ago. I'll put the link in the description below. Um, on the day, I was playing around with a slider and the Helios lens and this is the result. Which brings me back again to the fun aspect of things. When generally I'm playing around, I tend to use a lot of vintage lenses because it's nothing serious and it's more experimental and fun. So the last few shots we saw was with the Helios 58mm prime lens. Originally I was going to make a video just about that lens but then again I thought about making the subject a little bit wider. When we like something that's due to our own personal preference. But some things have their own unique little properties. For example the bokeh in the background has this sort of radial look. This a lot of people refer to as the swirly bokeh that the Helios lens is able to generate. In fact, it's famous for it as well. The next point that I'm going to mention is the simple fact that vintage lenses works with new camera bodies. Yes, the success rate is not 100% as we saw and the adapter can be a hassle but the point remains that with some research you can get the right kind of lens that works for you and the results can be very satisfactory. I mean, have a look at this. Can we tell that this shot was taken using a 30 year old lens? Or do we even care? I think the more important thing would have been in this case to put the camera on the tripod. This shot is straight out of the camera. I haven't touched it in any way. So what you see is what was recorded. What do you reckon? Now we've been going on about video with vintage lenses. Um, we might as well touch upon still photographs. Here's one example. Only the contrast had been adjusted in this image. Other than that, it was left as is. And it turns out to be fairly sharp on its own. I didn't need to touch that. One last thing to mention before we wrap up is the fact that when I'm using vintage lenses for extended amount of time, the battery tends to last longer. The possible explanation behind that could be that the modern lenses that I have has things like image stabilization and autofocusing and aperture and things like that, whereas the vintage lenses has no electronic need from the camera body. There is no automatic nothing. So let's quickly recap. In the con side of things, discovering a good lens can be tedious. It may require a lot of research. Also, getting it in good condition can be something to worry about. Next, the adapter is a necessary hassle that we have to go through. And finally, the lens will turn into a all manual lens, or at least majority of the time. On the positive note, first thing first, playing with vintage lenses can be fun. And it doesn't break the bank. And there is a lot of variety out there still, so we can pick and choose. Quality of image can still be achieved and the lenses on its own can have their own unique properties that we can explore. Be it through an adapter, vintage lenses works and it works for still shots too. And also while it's working, it is saving you power as well. So there are pros and cons. However, we started off with the question, are vintage lenses relevant today? I think we've answered that question that it most certainly is in their own ways. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. What you liked or disliked about this video, please make sure to leave a note on the comment section below. And also please make sure to subscribe in order to stay updated with our latest upcoming videos. Hope to see you in the next video. Bye for now.